Hello and welcome back. Today we're tackling Leet Code Problem 1975, Maximum Matrix Sum. This is a really interesting medium level problem, because, at first glance it looks like a complex pathfinding or simulation issue, but it actually boils down to a very clever, simple observation. Let's dive in. So what are we asking here? We are given a grid of integers, a matrix. We have a special operation we can perform as many times as we want. We can pick any two numbers that are next to each other, sharing a border, and multiply both of them by negative one. Basically, we can flip the signs of two adjacent neighbors at once. Our goal is to make the total sum of all the numbers in the grid as large as possible. Before we look at an example, let's understand what this operation really does. If we have two negative numbers next to each other and we flip them, they both become positive. That's a huge win for our sum. But what if we have a negative next to a positive? If we flip those, the negative number becomes positive, and the positive neighbor becomes negative. Essentially, we can move a negative sign around the grid like a game piece. Let's look at this example. We have a grid with two negative ones, and two positive ones. The negatives are diagonal from each other, so they aren't touching directly. You might think we're stuck. But remember, we can move negative signs. We could flip the top left one, and the top right negative one. The top left becomes negative, the top right becomes positive. Now we have two negatives next to each other vertically, then we flip those, and boom, everything is positive. This leads us to the aha moment. Since we can move negative signs anywhere, if we have an even number of negative values in the entire grid, we can eventually bring them all together in pairs, and cancel them out. The result? Every single number becomes positive. However, if we have an odd number of negatives, one negative sign will always remain. We can't get rid of it. So to maximize the sum, we should force that single unavoidable negative sign onto the number with the smallest absolute value in the whole grid. Just a quick heads up. We'll be walking through the logic and solution using Python first. It's great for readability. But don't worry if that's not your main language. I'll be showing the full code for Java, C++ and JavaScript towards the end of the video. So here is the plan, which the editorial calls journey from minus to plus. First, we assume the best case scenario that we can turn everything positive. We sum up the absolute value of every single number. While we do that, we count how many negatives we actually started with, and we keep track of the smallest absolute number we see, just in case we need it. Finally, if our count of negatives turned out to be odd, we subtract twice that smallest number from our total to account for the one leftover negative. Before we get into the code, let's talk about the real reason people fail at leak code. It's not because they can't reverse a linked list, it's because they break their daily streak. I built my daily to-do specifically to solve this. You can set solve daily leak code as a routine task. This means it reminds you to complete your routine tasks every day. It's a dedicated system to force you to be consistent which I also use to remind myself to upload these videos every day. If you're watching this channel you're trying to improve, so this tool makes sure you actually show up to do it. I also want to be 100% transparent about how this app will grow. I am an indie developer, not a big corporation. I will never take away a free feature you already use. Core features like repeating tasks remain free forever. However, as I add new server-heavy features, they will be part of the premium plan to help cover the costs of running the app. Also, the price of premium will go up every time I ship a major new feature, so the best time to get involved is right now, while it's early. Check it out at the link in the description. Okay, we've talked about the big picture and the logic, now let's see what this looks like as actual code. I'll put the full solution up on the screen first. And don't worry, after that, we'll walk through the most important sections together. Here is the full Python solution. It's clean and efficient. We basically do one pass over the grid to gather all our stats, and then a quick check at the end to determine the final result. Let's break it down piece by piece. We start by initializing three variables. First, a running total, starting at zero. Second, a variable to hold the smallest absolute value we find. We initialize this to infinity, so the first number we check will definitely be smaller. And third, a counter for how many negative numbers we encounter. Now we loop through every row and every value in the matrix. For each number, regardless of its sign, we add its absolute value to our total. This represents the ideal sum where everything is positive. While we're here, if the number is actually negative, we increment our counter. We also check if this number's absolute value is the smallest we've seen so far, and update our minimum tracker if it is. After checking every number, we have one final decision. If we counted an odd number of negatives, 
we know one number must stay negative. We want that number to be the smallest absolute value we found. But wait, in our loop, we already added that number as a positive. So to flip it to negative, we have to subtract it once to get back to zero, and then subtract it again to make it negative. That's why we subtract two times the minimum absolute value. So how efficient is this? For time complexity, it's linear, with respect to the total number of elements. If the matrix has n rows and m columns, we visit each cell exactly once, so it's big O of n times m. For space we are extremely efficient. We aren't creating any new arrays or grids, we just keep track of three simple numbers, so the space complexity is big O of 1, or constant space. Alright, that covers the logic and the Python implementation, as promised. For those of you who code in other languages, I'm about to show the full solutions for Java, C++ and JavaScript. I won't be narrating these in detail, so just pause the video on your language of choice to check it out. Here is the Java solution. Notice we use a long for the total sum to avoid overflow issues, just in case the numbers get really big. Pause here if you need to study it. And here is the C++ version. Similarly, we use long long for the total sum. The logic remains exactly the same. Pause if this is your preferred language. Finally, here is the JavaScript solution. We use infinity for the initial minimum value, but otherwise it follows the exact same steps. So to wrap things up, the big trick here is realizing that adjacent swaps let us move negative signs across the board. This simplifies the problem into a simple parity check. If we have an even number of negatives, we win completely. If odd, we take the smallest possible hit. It's a classic greedy approach. Also, if you're looking for even more leak code problems beyond the daily challenge, I've started a second channel called Leak Code Unlocked. It's where I'll be posting solutions to a ton of other problems. So if you're serious about your interview prep, be sure to check it out. The link is in the description below. Hope this leak code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video, because I upload videos daily. If you want to support the channel, a few people have asked how I plan my solutions. I'm a big fan of sketching out the logic and data structures on a tablet before I code, it really helps. I've put affiliate links in the description to the tablet I use and a few other good options. Using those links doesn't cost you anything extra, but really helps me out. Or, if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.